Hey girls and guys, it's Presley, and today in this video, I'm going to be talking about that I took a CPR class last week on Wednesday. So what happened is, um, my mom took me to the hospital where she works at so because she signed me up for a CPR class so I can learn basic life support and I never know. I could one day acro um, come across someone who's unresponsive, lying on the ground, and I would need to perform basic life support and CPR and all that stuff, so I need to learn how to do it. So my mom took me to the class before she went to work. So as soon as I entered the classroom, I was approached by a very sweet lady who was going to be my teacher on teaching me basic life support. And she said she was new to the teaching business, so she had another instructor watch over her, making sure she doesn't screw anything up or if she has any questions to that person. She would ask for help because she's new. All that stuff. So, But she was really sweet. And there weren't a whole bunch of students in the class. It was just me and one other person. And they were there because they um, took classes for pharmacy, I think in college or something. I forgot what they said, but they introduced themselves and told um, told us about how they were doing pharmacy and all of that. And they were, and they came in here just to learn CPR, CPR. And I introduced myself and I want, and I told them I wanted to learn CPR because I never know what could happen. So what we did first was watch a few videos just to get the gist of how to do chest compressions and other stuff. And we, we took notes too. It was optional taking notes so we can remember what, um, what we need to do or what we, if we forget anything, because I actually took a lot of notes on this paper. So front and back on this piece of paper. And, um, after we watched a few videos, we practiced on a bunch of a few CPR dummies. One was just a basic, you know, adult CPR. It was a male, you know, it had one head and one torso, no arms, no legs. You understand what I mean? Their mouth is open. They're just, they're just laying there. And next to that um, other dummy was a baby, a little infant child, a full body, infant child CPR dummy and they also had um oxygen masks or um bag masks or something you know with the oxygen and the little bag you squeeze in order to put oxygen in someone's mouth and all of that so as soon as we started to do chest compressions on the adult dummy first it was so hard like like, I can only imagine how tired um, real life um, rescuers would be if they perform if they performed a lot of chest compressions on an actual person. Cause you got to keep doing that for about what did it say on my notes? I'm looking back on my notes to uh, how many how many um, chest compressions you give a person. Where is it? Da, da. I think it said 30 compressions. It said, yeah, it said 30 compressions to two breaths. So after doing 30 chest compressions, you gotta give them like some air, like, you know, do CPR, just breathe in their mouth, cover their nose, breathe in their mouth. The breathing in the mouth thing, I think um, my teacher said it was optional because I don't know if I would feel comfortable breathing into someone's mouth after doing 30 chest compressions because you never know. Someone's mouth could be contaminated with germs and it could be just a random stranger. And I don't know if I feel comfortable putting my mouth on a stranger's mouth. It could be a homeless person. Who knows? So I'm not sure about the whole two breaths thing after the chest compressions thing, but if it's necessary to save someone's life, then... I could do it if it's necessary. So after we learned chest compressions on the dummy, we also learned how to do, use the bag masks. And that was a lot harder than the chest compressions itself because you got to lift their neck up to make sure their airways are open. 
you got to make sure the oxygen mask doesn't have any air escaping from their mouth. That was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I thought it would be easy. Just put it on their mouth and squeeze the bag. And I just, I just thought it would be simple. But apparently it wasn't. It was harder than I thought it would be. And I screwed up a lot. But I'm learning, all right? Cut me some slack. Okay, so after the adult dummy, we did a two rescuer situation where one person does chest compressions and another person does the oxygen mask, the bag mask and stuff like that. So we took turns from doing chest compressions to the bag masks. We, it said that we have to switch every two minutes because if we get tired on doing chest compressions, the chest compressions won't be effective. If you get really tired and you still do chest compressions while you're tired, it won't be effective. It won't be effective at all. It won't help the person. So it, it'd be wise to take a break for, was it 10 seconds? Or for, I think it was 10 seconds to make sure you get everything, you know, stabilize before you can start again on the other chest compressions then after the two rescue after we done that we learned how to use an aed machine which is which is the machine that'll like where you put these pads on um was it was it your right shoulder was it your right collarbone and underneath was it underneath on the left side underneath the nipple line and um, you gotta put those pads on and you gotta make sure to turn on the machine. Cause some people actually forget to turn on the AED machine. That's the most important thing whenever you need to use an AED machine. You turn it on and, and press the button. And if it shocks one time, you gotta step back. You gotta make sure you gotta clear the patient. If I'm saying anything, if, if I'm saying these things wrong, I got notes. I got notes back here. So after we learned how to use the AED machine, the last thing we did was do chest compressions on an infant. And chest compressions on the baby dummy was a lot easier. All you do is just put two fingers on the chest or do um, your thumbs like this and do chest compressions with your thumbs either or you can just use two fingers or you can um, learn how to do this we also learned how to do the Heimlich maneuver on a baby we just turn the baby over to its stomach and just pat the back of the of the dummy really hard it's funny when I was actually doing that procedure when I was doing that I honestly it looked like I was trying to burp the baby like come on gotta make sure you burp it out <laughs> And then we turn it around after we, after we slap the back five times, we turn it around gently and do chest compressions. And then after we learned how to do all the basic needs of chest compressions on an adult, time look maneuver on an infant, chest compressions on an infant, learn how to use the AED machine, oxygen mask, all that stuff, we took a test. And honestly, it felt like I was going back into high school learning and taking tests and after I took the test I passed and after I passed the test my teacher came over to me and we went over the answers I I got wrong and after we corrected the answers I got wrong I um I completed the, the test I completed the class and I was certified in basic life support and I know basic CPR and if I ever forget anything I have my notes right here and I don't regret taking the class because it's very useful and informative. You never know what could happen. And I thank my mom for, for taking me to the class and paying the class for me and just me doing whatever needs necessary because I could do this to one person if something happens to them. I could be responsible saving their life. and. It could happen one day. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.